This week on Tech Wrap, Twitter and Facebook gear up for the World Cup. We recap the biggest announcements at E3 2014. And we sit down with former Android chief Ugo Bada and talk about the Xiaomi Mi 3 smartphone. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and this is TechRap, your weekly source for tech news, gadget reviews, app recommendations, and social media tips. Everyone is excited about the World Cup. That's the FIFA World Cup, which kicked off on Friday, and both Facebook and Twitter are making sure you never miss an update. A Twitter search of the hashtag World Cup will give you access to a timeline consolidating updates related to the football extravaganza. Too cluttered for you? On the left column on Twitter, on the web, right under your profile, you can get updates from specific matches or pick a team if you want more World Cup excitement. Twitter is also bringing back a feature it calls hash flags. When you get a hash flag, a three-letter country code like hashtag ESP for Spain or hashtag BRA for Brazil, that company's flag will appear as an image or an emoji right beside the hashtag. Facebook, on the other hand, has a World Cup-specific news feed. Facebook calls it Trending World Cup, compiling posts about the sporting event. Apart from the news feed, Facebook launched a World Cup fan map, which shows where fans of top World Cup athletes are from. Just click on a player on the lower left-hand side, and the map will show you where the fans are located. The darker the shade, the larger the fan base. The yearly Electronic Entertainment Expo brings lots of goodies for video gamers everywhere, and this year's E3 is no exception. First up, Sony brings its PS Vita to TV to the West and renames it PlayStation TV. The PlayStation TV is a mini console that lets users play digitally downloaded PS3 games, PS Vita titles, older PlayStation games, and entertainment applications on a television screen. The unit will come in standalone and bundled options. The base PlayStation TV unit will cost $99. For $139, a bundle with the unit, a game controller, an 8GB memory card, an HDMI cable, and a copy of the LEGO Movie video game will also be available. It will launch in the US, Canada, and Europe in fall of 2014. Several new games were also announced and here are some of the most visually stunning titles gamers should look out for. Assassin's Creed Unity. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Metal Gear Solid 5: The Phantom Pain. In the air, tell the tales and The Legend of Zelda on Wii U. China-based smartphone manufacturer Xiaomi continues its global expansion by naming the Philippines its third retail market outside of Greater China. Xiaomi Global Vice President Ugo Para tells TechRap the company sees the Philippines as an important market in Southeast Asia. So it's a huge market, of course, uh, almost 100 million people. Uh, and, and they're highly social. Uh, incredibly social. All the social networks have taken off here. Uh, very uh, hungry for tech. Um, and uh, it seems from you know the cell phones that, I've, that I'm seeing that are popular here, right. open. Right. Open to trying new things. Um, but we're here to learn. So that's why we're going to start small. Uh, we're going to try to talk to as many people as we can, right. learn as much as we can quickly and then iterate. Barra is in Manila this week to set up shop and meet with existing users of the innovative Android-based platform. Barra was a top executive at Google working directly on Android. He moved to Beijing in October of 2013 to head Xiaomi's global expansion. The company has ambitious goals this year, the biggest of which is to sell 60 million smartphones. If successful, that would make them the third largest smartphone manufacturer in the world behind Samsung and Apple. To achieve this, the country has its sights set on 10 countries. It's already set up shop in Singapore and Malaysia. In the Philippines, Xiaomi will launch its flagship smartphone, the Mi 3, first via online retailer Lazada. 
No word on pricing and availability yet, but it should retail for around 12,000 pesos and should arrive in the coming weeks. More about the Mi 3 later on in the show. Samsung unveils two new tablets at a launch event in New York this week. Available in two sizes, 8.4 and 10.5 inches, the Galaxy Tab S is Samsung's new flagship tablet line featuring super high-res OLED displays. A year and a half ago at the 2013 Consumer Electronics Show, Samsung unveiled their foldable OLED displays. They call them Yoam displays. While no products have been announced so far, this video was released imagining what products would look like if this technology was implemented. This year, Nokia is taking steps in the same direction, showcasing their own foldable displays. Nokia shows off two types of foldable displays at a conference in San Diego, California. Both displays measure 5.9 inches with a pixel density of 249 ppi. Nokia calls one book type display, suggesting it can be folded twice, and another one with a more deliberate name called three fold display. There's no information yet on when these displays will make their way to actual devices, but with global manufacturers working on foldable displays, it appears it will be the new battleground in smartphones in the coming years. Okay, we're here at the University of the Philippines. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's raining out. Not necessarily the best day to shoot, but hey, no worries. Let's make the most out of the opportunity and take a look at the user interface of the Mi 3. So this is Mi UI version 5. As you can see, there is no app drawer. So if you install a new application, it goes immediately to the home page. One of the tweaks to the UI can be found in the messaging application. They actually have a feature called private messaging and it's actually hidden. So you'd have to swipe down with a couple of fingers. Uh, as you can see, there's a padlock over there. You pull it down all the way, it brings out the private messaging feature. I have a notification up there that says, you have a new message. When I scroll down on the notification shade, the messaging app will say, you have a new message, but it'll say unknown sender. So all that information, the message and the sender is masked at the moment. And as you can see, I have messages from Zap, from Cecil, and from Franco, but Jessica's message is nowhere to be found because it's hidden in private messages. So what I'll do now is I'll drag down again to bring up private messaging. And as you can see, uh, it's that Jessica's name. And then there's a message from her. I can go ahead and open that. And then it reveals her message. Hey there, how's it going? With MIUI, you can really customize the look and the feel of the operating system. If you go into themes, you can basically pick a, a new theme, download a new theme from the internet. Our connectivity isn't that fast, but as you can see, as it loads, there are a whole range of different themes available. I've actually downloaded uh, two. Uh, one is called Me Bunny, and uh, let me just go ahead and apply this theme. And as you can see, it, to it totally looks like a new phone. They've really customized all the different icons with um, different kinds of artwork. When I turn on the display, as you'll notice, they've also um, added an animated lock screen with uh, Me Bunny, which is um, their character. One thing I do like to show you is the permissions application. You know how you, when you launch an application, it'll basically ask for blanket permission uh, to do a whole range of tasks. Um, what this app allows you to do is to go into all the different apps and see what kind of permissions you grant out, like which, um, which apps can monitor my phone calls. Apparently, there are a lot of applications that are monitoring my phone calls. So I can go ahead and give access to certain applications like MeTalk right now has access. I can go ahead and say, uh, no, um, ask me each time. Um, I do not want Google Plus to have access to my phone calls. So I'll say deny. And then um, it has um, that ac access has been denied. You can also go into an app view and just take a look at the apps on a case-to-case -case basis as well. So Chrome, for example, has asked for blanket permission for all these different things and say, yeah, Chrome, I want you to, you can have access to my photos and videos, but my recorder, maybe, maybe not. So I'll go ahead and turn that off, deny permission for Chrome. Rain has stopped outside, so it's time to take the camera for a spin. The best way to maximize your camera is to use, uh, to turn on HDR and um, by the click of that button. What it does though, is when you take a photo, it will take a little bit more time 
to capture all the detail and process that image. But the results are um, actually pretty good for um, a camera. Now, another feature built into the camera is called skin tones. Now, if you're a Samsung user, you're probably familiar with a feature called Beauty Face, which adds a little bit of photoshopping. It softens your face when you're taking selfies. Now, while it's a good idea, sometimes it overdoes it. Now, what Skin Tones does is select how much enhancement uh, you want done. So you can go to low, you can do, go to mid, or to higher. Just turn it off completely if you want to go all natural. So let's go ahead and keep it at low. But what it also allows you to do is it can detect whether it's a female or a male. And uh, depending on your gender, uh, it will apply a different amount of enhancement to your skin. As you can see, we have Jessica over here and the camera has identified her, thankfully, as a female. It's fluctuating a bit between age 22 23 and 24. Right now it's stuck at 24. How old are you, Jessica? 22. Okay, so not bad, give or take. And let's go ahead and take a photo and see how um, that looks like. As you can see, um, it did add a little bit of softening to her face, uh, remove some of the blemishes. Uh, she looks actually pretty. Okay, now for a mini challenge. Jessica has an iPhone 5, which a lot of people consider to have one of the better uh, cameras in a smartphone. And let's see how the iPhone 5 photos compare to the photos that we take using the Mi 3. Okay, so no ice cream, so we'll get some cake instead. While we're on our way, just some thoughts about the uh, smartphone. The Mi 3 is made up of an aluminum magnesium alloy, giving it a nice uh, premium metallic feel. Phones of this price point are usually plastic, so that's a good thing. It feels a little bit heavy, not too heavy, but definitely heavier than my Nexus 5, but the weight does add to that whole premium quality of the smartphone. I do like the rounded corners or the rounded um, edges, but the corners are a little bit sharp, not to my liking, but that's really nitpicking. For a phone of this price point, it's uh, pretty good compared to the best smartphones out there. Come on, Jessica. While Jessica enjoys her cake, and before I wrap it all up, it must be said that this phone retails for give or take 266 US dollars. That's a steal given the phone's specifications. 2.3 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 800 processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and a 13 megapixel camera. In terms of performance, we did a test on Benchmark E-Test and Tutu, and this phone scores over 35,000, 35,471. Unofficially, that's faster than any other smartphone in the market today, including the HTC One M8 and the Samsung Galaxy S5. Our mini camera shootout with the iPhone 5 turned out pretty much in favor of the Mi 3. Overall, photos had a lot of punch, some great contrast. Our only comment is probably in terms of light metering. Although that said, we only shot photos in auto and didn't use the HR functionality of both smartphones. So to wrap it all up, pros and cons, pros, amazing camera, blazing fast performance, affordable price tag, and one of the best implementations of the Android operating system that we've seen on a smartphone today. Cons, the phone does not have LTE support, there's a non-removable battery, and last but not least, there are no provisions for expandable memory. All these factors considered, if you're looking for an affordable smartphone that doesn't skimp on specs and power, then the Xiaomi's Mi 3 is built to impress and is ready to take on the best smartphones out there. And that was Tech Wrap. For the latest tech news, visit rappler.com slash technology. Follow Rappler on social media, join our conversation online, and send us emails. All the details are below. That's all for this week, folks. I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.